Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda. Today I'm in my garden, y'all. It's feeling a whole lot better out here today. The sun is shining. And I don't know exactly uh, what the temperature is right now, but it feels like it's about in the 70s. Feels really good. What I'm gonna do though, I'm going to plant some of my uh, seeds that I got from uh, Baker Creek. And I'm going to uh, fix up a new bed for some of them. And it's gonna be mainly for some of my root vegetables. And then I'll be uh, popping in some of my other ones in some other spaces that I have left open in my garden. So first of all, I gotta fill this bed up. I have already uh, put together uh, another bed. And what I've done is I put some lining in the bed. I just used some of my landscape fabric right here. I put some of this in the bed and then I tore up some cardboard boxes. Now I've gone over to my wood pile and I've gotten some wood because I want to uh, fix it because it's not level. Mine, uh, this area here ha is on a slope and sometimes my beds are sloped. So that will cause the potting mix to uh, seep out the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I've already put some of the landscape fabric down to try to uh, prevent that problem. Going to add some of the uh, rotten wood and to also try to keep it from uh, leaking out. I don't want my potting mix to come out of the bed, so I'm just putting it around the edge. This wood pile has been here for a while, so this uh, wood is pretty, pretty crumbly. Some of it's crumbling like that, so I am going to just put it down. That's, how, that's my purpose for using it now. It's still going to be used. I'll use it to help fill my beds. But then I'm going to go ahead and start to put in some of my potting mix. I think I'm going to put this one down a little because I don't want this to be too tall because this is where I'm going to put some of my I was thinking about putting some of my carrots in here. I didn't bring it. Let me see what seeds I bought out. Okay, the seeds that I bought out would be fine in this bed. I bought out the thousand head kale and the amaranth. Someone told me that these were backwards and yeah, it's going to be backwards. The writing is going to be backwards because of the way that I'm putting it to the uh, camera. If I turn the camera around, it would be the other way, but I want to be able to see because sometimes I have it turned the other way around and then you won't be seeing anything. So bear with me. <laughs> this is the uh, scarlet kale. And this is the Chinese uh, choice. I also ordered a uh, microphone because someone was saying they couldn't hear me like when I go into the chicken coop. And I got the microphone, y'all, but they sent me the wrong one. I know I ordered the, the, the one that I was supposed to give, but they sent me the wrong one. So I'm having to send it back and get another one. So I hope that you all will just uh, bear with me. I try to talk louder. Sometimes I yell, then sometimes it seems like I'm low. So y'all just bear with me until I get my mic and everything going. But um, these are the ones we're gonna plant. This will be fine in this bed. It's not gonna be a uh, area. These will not need deep roots. I thought I was gonna put my uh, carrots in here, but I will put them in another bed. So uh, my carrots and my beets will go in another bed. These are the ones I'm gonna plant in this bed. they will be fine. I already got my labels made. Now all we gotta do is fill the uh, raised bed. So let's fill the raised bed, y'all. I got me some potting mix over here. We're gonna go
bag. This will only need about another half a bag. I got a half a bag right here. They gotta take all of that. I think that's gonna be fine. Y'all, it's just something about this fresh dirt. When you get, a, when you get some fresh potting mix, it's just something about that fresh potting mix. Just makes you feel like just, just stay out here all day and just plant, plant, plant. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, amend this soil. And what I am amending this soil with today is going to be some um, garden tone. I'm also going to add some um, blood meal. I'm going to add blood meal in here with the garden tone. Okay, so I'm going to be adding some blood meal and some bone meal to this bed. I decided to go ahead and put some bone meal in here because I may pop in uh, some one root vegetable. This is what I'm going to mend the soil with. I was trying to get my happy frog, but I wasn't able to get it. So I had to go ahead and get some Asomo garden tone. And it works really good. I just don't like the smell. The happy frogs uh, don't seem to have a strong odor, and that's what I like about it. And it, it just works good at growing plants also. We're gonna amend with this and with some of the bone meal. I'm gonna work it in the soil. Okay, so now I'm gonna start planting. First thing I'm gonna plant is my amaranth. And I'm just gonna be putting in a few of these seeds. I'm not going to be uh, putting in a whole bunch because uh, these are some new varieties to me and I just wanna uh, try them out. These are some really tiny seeds. So, it's gonna be kind of hard to just uh, put in a few. And don't know that I bought the label to the Emmer. So, I'm gonna have to wait. I'm not planting these right now because I don't want to plant something and then I don't know where it's at. And I can say that I'm gonna remember, but I won't. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this thousand head kale right over here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put the thousand head kale back here at the back. And I imagine these greens are looking like some, uh, all Nebraska greens, like some little tiny mustard seeds. They probably what they look like. Yeah, they do. So I am just gonna put a few of these in. Just gonna sprinkle. Just a few ends, you can see those. I'm gonna sprinkle them right back here at the back. I'm gonna cover them lightly. And I am going to put my label right there so that I would remember what is there. Next thing I am going to plant is gonna be the scarlet kale. So it's gonna go right here in front of the uh, thousand head kale because that thousand head kale is gonna be 
tall. And so this one is gonna be, I think, shorter than the thousand head kale. So I'm just gonna put a few right here in front. So those little seeds, so those are some tiny seeds also. I'm just gonna cover them, pop that in. And the next one is the Chinese yellow heart choy, winter choy. And I'm just gonna put some, put that right here in front. I'm just gonna drop a couple of these. Well, I'll go ahead and drop three or four in case, you know, just to get the germination going. And if more germinates, then I can take them and move them. Okay, so I'm gonna put my label right here. So I'm sure that's gonna be all that can fit in that space right there. Cause you don't wanna overcrowd these brassicas cause they're heavy feeders and most of them get pretty big. Okay, so now I'm gonna give me a label. The next one plant is gonna be the red Reuben Brussels sprouts. I already have my label and I'm just gonna drop in a couple of seeds. And y'all, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, um, when it's time to start planting the, um, plant the, the starts for my spring garden, I'll be re all of these again and I'll be putting them on the grow lights in the house to, you know, have them in the spring. But I just wanted to go ahead and try these now since I already got my seeds, just to see what they're like and see if they'll go ahead and grow. I don't know which ones are going to do well because as I said, I've never grown any of these before. So I am just trying them out. Like I said, this was the first time I had ever gone on um, Baker Creek website and I just got excited. It has so many varieties. And that's what I like when I'm ordering seeds. That's one of the reasons I garden is because I like different varieties of food. I don't want to just have to get the same thing. Just go to the grocery store and there's that one kind of squash or that one kind of um, what I just put in there, Brussels sprouts. I want to uh, try some other things. The only way you'll be able to get them if you go to some of the fancier stores in the uh, cities or if you go to some fancy restaurant. I want those things for me and I want to be able to grow them in my garden. So that is one reason that I garden. It's because I, I do like variety in my in my food. The next one is gonna be the Japanese flowering kale. I'm gonna pop it up here at the front. And all these, as I said, they're tiny, tiny seeds. I'm gonna put a few of those here. Hopefully some of those will germinate. And really y'all, these seeds are so tiny, it's not even going to matter about covering them up because they are so tiny. When I water them in, they will get uh, covered. So that was the Japanese flowering kale. And y'all, I just think that's going to be beautiful. And now I'm going to just pop in my uh, celeries. So I have my, um, I did not plant the amaranth, or did I? Because I still had the label in my hand. That was the Brussels sprouts. No, I did not. I did not plant the amaranth. So where is the amaranth? Okay, here's the amaranth. Let's go ahead and get this amaranth planted. So we ain't even got a label for it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop it in. Yeah, I'm running out of space because I know that these are going to get pretty large. Oh my goodness, these seeds are so tidy and so pretty. Y'all can see these. Can y'all see those little seeds? They are so tidy and so pretty. They they like glistening. Like some little black jewels. I'm just gonna put that, put most of them back in there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop these other ones in there. Now those look such beautiful seeds. 
And I also did not realize when I showed you all my seeds before, and I was telling you some of the seeds didn't seem like they had many packages in it. I mean, some of the packages didn't have, seem like they had that many seeds in it, but those were my, my free seeds. And so I did not realize at the time that uh, Baker's Creek had sent me some uh, free seeds. So thank you, Baker's Creek, for the free seeds. I was going back through them later on, and I realized that I had some free ones in there. So that's, that was nice. Okay, so now I've, I've gotten down to my uh, my celery. I got some spinach in my hand, but I'm going to plant that spinach. I think I'm going to put it in the bed with my other spinach. I don't know. Y'all, I am enjoying that other spinach so much. As I told you, I'm putting that spinach in, in, in ramen, and it is so delicious. I season it up, you know, different seasons almost every time. But y'all, that is something good. That spinach is so delicious. So that's a good way to get your greens in. Eat it with your ramen. Okay, so this is a different spinach. I will be able to tell the difference in this spinach, but that spinach may fill out more. So I'm not gonna put it in that same bed. I'll figure out where I'm gonna put these. But right now, I am gonna go ahead and pop in. I got four different varieties of celery. I think I just put in a couple of seeds of each one of them because you don't need, I don't, we, we use a lot of celery, but these are some different varieties. And okay, there, there's a Utah tall in there and a Chinese white, but these are different varieties. So I don't know how they're going to taste or anything like that. I'm just going to try them out for right now. So I'm going to put a couple of these seeds in here of each. This is the Chinese pink. Time for me to get a new pen too, because my pen is beginning to fade out. Chinese pink celery. I'm just gonna stick it right here. And go ahead and pop in. I wanna make sure I see contact with my seeds before I'm ready. So I'm not gonna lay my seeds in the bed. But I'm going to um These seeds are tiny too, but they don't look like mustard or turnips or anything like that. Oh, they are, they are tiny. I, I dropped a few. Get some more. Now, look, these are so tiny, and then they just blow in the wind. Those other ones at least didn't just blow away in the wind. I'm just going to put them right there. Okay, so that's our Chinese pink planted. We got Chinese white. I'm going to put it right here in front. And that Utah tall looks more like the, the, spin, uh, the celery that I'm you know, used to eating. So I don't know if that's the name, but fluff the soil around it. Now we're going for the Utah tall celery. And I'm going to put it right here in the front. All those seeds almost look alike. That one's a little bit darker. And the last one is the uh, giant red. I believe that's gonna be real pretty too. The giant red celery. So I think these will be all good regardless. It may not be the uh, one that you wanna put in the certain dishes that you're used to putting it in, but uh, I'm sure you can use it for juicing, or something like that, but I will let you all know once these germinate and I start trying them, what I'll be using those using them for. So just a few here, cause I'm sure I'm going to like them because as I told you, I barely found a, a vegetable that I don't like. I even got used to cilantro. Okay, so I need a label for this one. 
and that was the giant red. I hope I'll be able to tell what all of these are later because my uh, pen is going out, my marker is going out, and I can barely see this. So now I'm going to water everything in. Okay, y'all, I'm out here by the chicken uh, run, and I have started amending this soil. This is the bed that I had the um, eggplant in, and there was a ground cherry here and some peppers. And it also had a lot of ants in this bed, and I saw some spiders in here. So I did treat this bed with some diatomaceous earth. Or diatomaceous earth, you say? With some diatomaceous earth. And then I, um, I have amended this bed. So what you see right now, that white on top, is some bone meal. So I put bone meal, I put some fertilizer, and I also put some blood meal. But I'm going to add some more soil to this bed. Because as you can see, over here on this end, the bed has uh, some holes in it, some gaps where there's not much potting mix. So I want to go ahead, I want to fill that in so these plants can have a good, uh, solid soil foundation. I think I'll go around here on the other side so I can pour this in. And I also want to have this soil fluffy because this is where I'm going to be planting some more of my uh, root vegetables. I'm going to plant some carrots and some beets in this bed. So I want to make sure that I have enough soil in here. Here and I had put some uh, turnip green seeds in here, so they are still in here, and I'm sure they will. Some would make their way, but I had put them over here in this corner over here. So I'm gonna keep that in mind when I'm planting that they will be making their way to the soil. I'm sure. But there was some over there. There was some germination over there. But there was no way to get this soil in here the way that I needed and keep that there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more of my fertilizer. Just a little, because I already got some in here. Let me go my bone meal. So I got different varieties. I showed you all in an earlier video of the uh, beets and the carrots that I got. And I got this really dark carrot. And I was getting it because that uh, purple has, I can never think of the name of it because it's not an easy name to remember, but if you all Google which, what those purple uh, vegetables contain that helps you. It's very good for you. Antioxidants. I'll just say that it has a lot of antioxidants that you need. Oh, that we're gonna leave it right there. It, it contains a lot of antioxidants that are good for you. And we all know that we need antioxidants to fight off disease, viruses, things like that. So when you're eating those foods that are rich in 
dark color like this purple, then you'll be having agents that are good at combating that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just make me a little, a couple rows. Cause these are some tiny carrot seeds and I don't want to, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just make these rows and I'm not gonna make the rows. I'm gonna just go ahead and put them on top of the soil and then wash them in when I water. Cause y'all see, these are some tiny seeds. They're very tiny. So I am going to just spread them right into the soil, right? I'm basically spreading them on top of the soil. And so now our, they're called Pusa, black so they are planted now okay the next one i'm planting is going to be these bull's blood beets so i'm just going to sprinkle a few of these seeds just a few that's, that's enough beets that's a lot really so i'm just going to put them That was the bull's blood beets. Okay, the next one that I planted is this strike beet. And I can't pronounce, pronounce the name of it, but I just planted that one. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this uh, sugar beet, which is called an albino beet. But you can make sugar out of this beet. Okay, so I got them all planted in. And so I'm going to water them. I got everything labeled so I'll know to leave this bed alone. Don't be trying to throw no mustard green seeds over here. Cause y'all know I will put some mustard green or turnip green seeds in an empty spot. But I got everything labeled so I know that this whole area is filled already. The only thing I can do in this bed is come over here and I can harvest some, uh, what is it? Oh, this is a cauliflower. I need to put a label on it too because so I won't forget. This is a cauliflower. This one, I think this one is, I don't know. I think that's a, I'm not sure, y'all. I just have to wait. I'm not going to put anything on them right now because I don't know. I think one is a collard and one is a cauliflower. I know that this one is a kohlrabi, a purple kohlrabi right here. So I won't forget that because they, you know, let you know what they are. But uh, this one is looking kind of like mustard or cauliflower. I mean, uh, this one looks like cauliflower. I think this is cauliflower and that's a collard green. We look down in there. Still can't tell, so I'll wait. But the chickens did get over here and they ate on both of these plants. And I didn't notice it at first, but uh, they were eating on too because you remember I came out and I tore off some of those leaves and gave it to the chickens which I think I'll do the same thing to these. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these leaves on, on the outside that are chewed up and I'm gonna give them to the chicken and I'll keep those inside leaves. Not very many left after all that. I'll take a few off of these and I'm just gonna give it to the chicken because they've already been eating on those. And now I will water in my other plants. I just want to make sure I get good soil to seed contact on these seeds. These are the celery and the Brussels sprout and the um, thousand head kale, scarlet kale. I 
Okay, so I'm going to loosen my soil up in here. This is where I had the Celtics planted. And y'all, that Celtics went to seed and bolted so fast that I really didn't get the chance to enjoy it. So I don't think I would be planting it again. That was one that I just tried. I had never uh, tried it before. Well, I did. I tried it last season. I did do uh, it. Uh, I planted it in the fall last season and it did both then also so i am not gonna fool with it again i don't think that it was really worth it but i am going to plant this i'm gonna plant parsnips par, parsnips here i can get these roots out those are probably some of those Celtic roots I don't need any roots in this bed interfering with the growth of my parsnips. Parsnips is one that I've never had any luck with. I've planted it before, but I've never had any luck with it. So I am going to plant them right here in this nice, fluffy soil. I got my label right there, and I'm not going to forget that that is what is planted here. Add some bone meal so that I can get some nice roots, hopefully. Add some blood meal. Add nitrogen back that the Celtics robbed this soil of while it was going to seed because it got large. and add some all-purpose fertilizer. Get all that work in. You can see that the, it'll have a lot of room to grow. You can see how deep I can get into this soil. So all of this space, I'm going to reserve this for these parsnips because if you've ever grown parsnips or if you did the research, it takes a while for parsnips to, to grow. So I'm going to have to know that this is what's planted here, and I'm not going to be putting anything else here. So I am going to put these seeds in here, making me a couple rows. This is what parsnip seeds look like. I'm trying not to get them too close together. See, I'm putting all these back in there, so I didn't plant all those seeds. I waste some on the ground, though. I need to get out there and get my seeds, y'all. Let me see. There's just a few, though, right down here. I'll get them later, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover my uh, parsnip seeds back up with this soil, this nice soil with all these amendments in it. All this good compost and fertilizer, bone meal, and blood meal. So, still looking at I see my five seeds down there on the ground. Let me get these seeds because they're bugging me. I'm just going to throw them over in the bed because I'm not going to put them back in my seed package because I'm sure I will get some soil in it and mess up my seeds. So. Parsnip is in. So now I can just water that in. And I got my label in, so I won't forget. Go ahead and water everything else in. Y'all, those carrots are looking nice over there. Look at those carrots, bro. Y'all know I got to fill down in there. I got to see if some carrots are underneath there now. Because these carrots have grown a lot in just the last few days since the weather has cooled off. I still don't feel any carrots here inside. Huh? Underneath. Wait a minute. Wait, wait.
they all pretty small, so I could have thinned those out some, but I'll let them grow some more before I thin them. So I am going to just do some more watering out here. I'm going to uh, plant a couple more things out, out here, y'all, but that is all that I am going to plant on camera today. But I hope that you all enjoyed this video and that you'll give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. Go ahead, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.